Shalom Vocha. We are in a new book, Book of Numbers, Sefer Bamidbar. We're in the portion Bamidbar. Bamidbar means actually in the desert, but this book calls as well Sefer Pekudim, Numbers. Why? Because in the beginning of the book, in this portion, God is asking Moses to count the sons of Israel. Why? After the golden calf and all the big party they had there, many lost their heads, you know, literally lost their heads. And God is asking them, like, God is asking Moses to count the sons of Israel. Later on in the portion, we see that not just the whole nation is being counted, as well each tribe, the way he was situated uh, around the Mishkan. And each one with his flag, each tribe, how many people there is. And later on into the portion, God is telling uh, Moses, in mind, I wanted every firstborn to work in the temple. Because of what happened with the golden calf, now I take this holy work and I transfer it to the Le Levi's. The Levi's, there are three family, Kehati, Gershoni, and Merari, three different names, and that each name like symbolizing a different inner work within, and that's probably what we're going to talk in the next portion. We are soon going to have this beautiful holiday, receiving the Torah, Unbelievable. Chag Shavuot. <laughs> Get ready for the blintzes and cheesecakes. Yeah. <laughs> and ice cream. <laughs> it says that over there we were around the mountain waiting to receive the Torah as one people and one nation and one, one heart Mordechai just told me a story just to reflect what does it mean really to be as one come on shoot him uh, there's, uh, <laughs> with, the, with the Buffalo River <laughs> okay we got we got to go back to Buffalo no, in, right. in the days that was it that we we were all a group of students. I remember the first time I experienced a Shavuot holiday, and we stayed up with the rabbi learning that night. And, you know, Buffalo, you say, like in May, could be that the, there's still a little ice on the water there. It's a little bit cool there outside. And so the rabbi have to go that night. He says, okay, guys, let's go. Like we used to call it a road trip. You know, he used to get in the car and go on a road trip. He said, let's go. We're going out to the creek here. And uh, we said to the rabbi, okay, what are we going to do? We figured we we're going to go fishing or something. We didn't know what we were going to do there. So all of a sudden, he said, the rabbi says, okay, now we've got to take off our clothes and we're going to immerse ourselves in, in the creek. And we said, rabbi, it's freezing. It's like the water is freezing, freezing here. So the rabbi is this little guy from Brooklyn, Rabbi Gurari, God bless him. And he starts getting undressed, you know, skinny dipping. And he, all of a sudden, he goes in. And we're saying, wow, what, this is crazy. And we're looking at each other. There's, there's five of us. So we say, you know what? That's it. All for one and one for all. We got to go in. And we did it. And we were screaming. It was <laughs> freezing. And we said, Rabbi, this is crazy, crazy. Anyway, if you guys come to Tzfat, me and I are going to take you to the Ariz Mikveh. And yes. you guys can have the same experience. Yes. You can't all jump in at the same time, but you can definitely have the experience there. So that's what we mean as one, is even when we're screaming at each other, in the end, we need to remember that we are one. In this portion, God is going to talk about unconditional love. And what do I mean by that? God is asking Moses to count the sons of Israel. Are you serious? It's God. He knows everything. Why well, doesn't know how many people got left, how many Jews are? Of course he knows, but why he counts them? The Lubavitch Rebbe bring the translation of the Torah that's saying, Lehudia Chibatam. Maze Lehudia Chibatam? To show their endearment. endearment. To show how dear... Precious they are. Precious they are to him. But if we're thinking about it, getting just a little bit deep, excuse me, when you're counting a whole nation as one, and you're counting every person, and you don't count him for his attributes or for what he's good in, but you're counting him as one. So each and every one of them is a number. And as a number, how do you want to tell me that you're going to 
show your affection and how dear they are and precious they are to you. They're mm. merely a number in a big crowd. But no, in this point, the Lubavitch Rebbe is trying to tell us something that God is trying to show us. Why I'm counting everyone as one, I'm not counting each and every one of you for his good attributes, for his good deeds. I'm counting him just for who he is, human. A soul, a divine soul. Chelek eloka mimal mamash. A real, a part of the divine. If we can visualize, we'll take the analogy that God is like one big sea. Think that each and every one of us is a drop within this sea. He's taking us into another observation, a kind of meditation. And from there he will link us with this unconditional love. So we could think that we can judge people or we can see them or value them according to their talents. But let's say if the rich person suddenly will lose all his money, so he's not rich anymore. Let's say the wise person will suddenly forget, how do you say, amnesia? How do you say this? Uh, amnesia, yeah. He will get an amnesia, so he wouldn't like remember his wisdom. So then all of his value was, thanks to the fact that he's rich, or wise. Now, God is telling us here, in this portion, he's trying to, to how to say, to bring out this bond that we have with him, saying So that, our connection is much deeper than skin deep. It's much deeper that goes to the essence of who we are, to the essence of what God is. And therefore, since God put, he blew the soul into us through our nostrils, and he gave us life, so that soul is a part of his and it was always be with us and that's why the Baba Cherebi said once that somebody came to talk to him and he said that you know he talked about his brother-in-law and that he's not so close to things in, in, anymore the Rebbe said it's not true because everyone is close since everybody has that soul everybody's close we just have to light up that soul sometimes and ignite it exactly so God is saying like to us it's like I want to tell you here that my bond with the Jew, I didn't choose the Israelites because they received my Torah, because they're doing my commandments. I chose you as human for who you are. So even if, like, let's just, even if that a Jew wouldn't do he, the Torah or the mitzvot, God still loves him. He loves the Tzaddik and not the Tzaddik. A, a father loves their children. Exactly. No, no conditions on it. Unconditionally. That's right. And that's the way we're supposed to look at each other. We need to remember sometimes in friction, sometimes in quarrels, sometimes we fight. This is part of life. Sometimes we have I anger. want to send Dayal back to Morocco. Well, exactly. What can I say? You know? It happens, but uh, we yeah. love each other. Yes. <laughs> It's very hard to be American in Israel. God, the Israelites are so rude. Oh, you gotta love my dear Israeli brothers. That's it. That, that, that's really the point. We just need to remember this self value, this value that each and every one has been granted with no difference, just for the fact that we are human, that we are part of the divine. And all that we need to do is to remind it to ourselves is also part of me and I need him to feel this whole thinking that I don't need my fellow friend just know that it's your animalistic soul is expressing and is going above the divine we are all one of big picture it's reminding me uh, it's a lifetime membership yeah. you, ne you never lose it it's something that you know people can lose memberships in different things but when you get this part and this connection, it's for not just 120 years, but it's for forever, for generations. And, you know, the soul continues and uh, is even reincarnated. So it's, uh, it's a continuous thing that, you know, Tom Sheikh is going to come. Absolutely. So if we're looking at the portion, then we're seeing that the tribes, the head of the tribes, were as well with the counting. 
And we're seeing that God still count every tribe. Every tribe have his flag and his color. So then you can maybe say, okay, wait, we were talking about the whole, that everyone is even. So why every tribe have his flag and, flag and color? Here the Lubavitcher Rebbe is pointing out something amazing. That, you know, when I've done my tshuva, I thought that maybe I will lose my uniqueness, you know, that I will become uh. one of... You know, many and black and white people, yeah, black yeah. and white people, and I'll <laughs> lose my uniqueness. No, the tribes, even each tribe, have its quality. For example, for example, Reuven, Reuven from the meaning Reuven, see a child, sight. What does it mean, sight? Ria, sight in Avodat Hashem means that a person, when he sees something, he sees everything. He see deep more. He sees the depth of everything. The depth of everything. Same with Shimon. Shimon Ba'avodat Hashem. His way. Hearing. Hearing. So when someone, for example, is hearing a class, even if the one that speaks the class is an amazing rabbi and he's very wise, and the other person is just a disciple and young, but he's probably from Shimon, when he hears something, he hear deep things within what this person is being hearing. said, yeah. In more than what is being said. Yeah. So each one have his own work. For example, Issachar, he's learning the Torah. Zbulun is going out to work and helping Issachar by le- le- doing the Torah. So each one have his own uniqueness. And the 12 tribes were there and being mentioned to say that even your quality, the attribute that you receive, you need to remember that it's part of the whole. So when you are so frustrated or you're just seeing a person like behaving not right and you're starting to judge him, remember, yeah, maybe you see his disadvantage, but you need to remember that he have within him a quality that you don't have. And if you think about this quality that he doesn't have, then you, in a way, you lowering your ego because you remember that he has something tremendously humbling for you. Exactly, yeah. that's the word. You, you look, you look at that. You, you see that you have to know to and, remember, and you also have to try to see the good in the other person. You know, that's something that we have to go very deep in ourselves because once we humble ourselves, then it's easier to see the good in somebody else and see the quality in somebody else and see this beautiful advantage this person has and uh, we can appreciate and love this person much more and though the rabbi is saying that this appreciation is still it's a it's a level in unconditional love because if you remember only its quality so you like your friend because it's quality no you need to remember the above that the fact that we are all one tribe a part of the one meaning that each and one of us is a drop is a part of the divine and that's where we need to guide ourselves blessing you with all success in doing it to remember that in daily life it's not simple all we have to do is to recall Zahor et to see really more than what we seeing on the outside but to see the depth seeing you in the por- next portion and Shabbat Shabbat Shalom, Shalom. and uh, we'll, we'll speak to them before Shavuot, right? Uh, maybe. Maybe. If not, uh, <laughs> if not, you're counting down to Shavuot. Today is the 42nd day of the Omer on uh, Tuesday, and keep counting. We have one more week till Shavuot, and everybody should receive the Torah in a meaningful way, in a very inner way. Amen. Bye.